Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick walkthrough of the United States of America Notebook, a flexible U.S. geography curriculum for you. This is built very much like my other library curriculum style notebooks, um, but this one is specifically a full curriculum for geography. You could also use it in addition to a U.S. history curriculum to give everything sort of a sense of place. You can deep dive, take as long as you want on it, or just kind of do a basic overview. All right, so I am in Zoom Notes. This has quickly become my favorite app to use digital notebooks or PDFs in um, because it's very powerful. Keep in mind that my Zoom Notes uh, layout screen might look a little different from yours since you can customize them. There's lots of great videos on YouTube um, regarding how to use Zoom Notes and some of the special things it can do. But you could use any program um, like Microsoft OneNote, uh, NoteShelf, Notability, and of course, many of you use GoodNotes. All right, so I've already imported the 50 State Notebook in here. Uh, so I'm gonna click on that and we'll jump right in. I go ahead and label uh, my child's name on the front and I keep their various notebooks in folders on that home screen. Actually, let me go back so you can see that. So Hayden's are always in green and Micah's are in orange. Um, so it's pretty easy to create little folders. You just drag uh, notebooks on top of each other. All right. So I'm going to page over. This is just the intro page. It talks about how this curriculum is self-paced. Again, just go down the rabbit trails. Whatever interests you, do as many or as few of the activities as you like. There is a resource list of books and websites and documentaries that I recommend um, when doing this study. But of course, they're all optional. Substitute whatever you can get your hands on, whatever you feel like is best for your particular kids and their ages. Okay, so the entire notebook, of course, is hyperlinked. So all of the tabs here on the right-hand side jump you right into those sections. And then there are going to be two indexes. I did an index by region, for those of you who prefer to think of the states by region and who are studying specific regions. But I also did an index um, alphabetically, for those of you who prefer to get around that way. I probably use both, depending on what we're doing. Um, but it, all the states are underlined because they are also hyperlinks. So if I click on, say, Texas, which is where we are from, it's going to go right to my Texas divider. Now, each state is going to have a divider. And at the top, there's going to be a table where you can add your own state-specific resources. So perhaps you um, find a really cool book on Texas that you want to include. Then you would just go ahead and fill that in up here at the top. And then I write in the our plan. I use the highlighter just to color them. You could, of course, take your pen tool and you know make an X or however you want to do it. Just have fun with it. I keep all of the designs of our of our notebook black and white and um, just really clean because your kids can add the color. They can they can add their little personalities into their notebooks as they work through them. So your plans is something that the teacher or the parent would fill out. So, for instance, I um, said that he needed to read pages 95 and 96 in the Kids Atlas, read page 86 in our How the States Got Their Name book, do the three state pages, complete the Indigenous Peoples page for this state, complete the selfie page for the state, and memorize the state capitals up until this state. I would not recommend that you have your child do every single activity for every single state. They will get burnt out fast. These are meant to be a list of ideas um, for you to choose for them and to alternate or let them choose. Say you might tell them, OK, you have to choose two activities other than the state pages. Um, you know, this curriculum is really meant to be flexible enough for to, to work for any age. It's one of the reasons that it's gender neutral that it is sort of age neutral in the way that it's laid out so that you can scale it up or scale it back and it can work for any child. Okay, so behind each state divider, I'm just gonna page over using my page navigation. You're gonna find the first state page. So it's gonna ask them to color the state. I like to use my little spray can here and then you can just click. 
and boom, they've now colored that state. They could also have used the highlighter tool or if you're in a program that doesn't have a spray can, of course, they can just pick a pen color and highlight it. Then it asked them to actually draw the state themselves. So they would come over here and, whoop, you know, try to draw the state. This is my really fast, terrible sketch here of Texas. And then to label the capital. So they would just work through these little pages. They could draw the flag here. This is also another good place to use the um, spray can. Oops. Will only work if it's uh, if the lines are closed off. So this one might not work. But anyway, you you get the idea. They could come back in here, change the colors, and draw. Um, you know, color these in. So I won't bore you with going through and trying to do it, but you get the idea. And then page two, I'll show you what that looks like. It says, write two sentences about a famous person who lived in this state, who are they, and what made them famous. Then draw or write about three famous landmarks from this in the state. Okay, so they could do that. The third page, ask them to write some tourist attractions, list the sports team, look up the weather. Give them the chance to mark if they've been there or if they would want to visit there if they had no desire and then every state is also going to have the works cited page now if your kids are younger you may not have them fill out the works cited but if they're older you may want to get them um, to start being in the habit when they're doing research to actually cite their work and say where they got that information that's really good um, practice for research paper writing, which by the way is an optional activity. If we go back to this state page, you can see it says uh, choose a question from one of the state pages and turn it into a research paper. Use the activity page to help you plan. So most of the referenced pages on here are talking about things that are in this activity tab. So let's just navigate over to the activity tab. And you can see these are also all hyperlinked. So research outline, they might use this to do an outline for a research paper. Then the very next page is where they can actually write their research paper. They could of course handwrite. They could use the type tool and type. And along with the type tool, they can also use the little microphone down at the bottom and use dictation for those that may have um, learning differences that make it difficult to write. Uh, let's go back and look at some of the other pages in the activity section. In fact, let me just click on it and we'll start from the beginning. Oops, I have to be on the, oh, by the way, if you ever find your links are not working, it's probably because you're either in Zoom Notes, not on a navigation tool. I like to use this little crossbar, it's called the pan and zoom. Um, but if you're in good notes, you just have to turn the pen tool off to be able to click your links. So if your links aren't working, it's usually a user error issue most of the time because I have checked all of these links. They should be working for you. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Indigenous peoples. There is just a page for them to read about what it means to be an indigenous person. What do we call indigenous people? What does colonization mean? And a couple of links where they can find resources. And then it would say indigenous peoples up. So if we're still working in our Texas, we would come over here and your kiddo would write, um, oops, we would write Texas. And I don't know why my Apple pencils giving me some error here. Um, and then they would fill this out. Who were the indigenous peoples that were known to inhabit the land in this state before it was colonized? And then who are the indigenous peoples that still inhabit the land? I think it is very important that while we're studying the geography of the United States that we are acknowledging and recognizing and studying 
the indigenous people who were here before it was colonized and turned into what we know as America today. Um, it gives them a chance to find out, maybe research about an indigenous person, past or present, that uh, lived in this land in the area of Texas, and then write a few sentences about their life. So that is the indigenous peoples page. There is a history of the flag matching page. So they would read, American ships in New England waters flew a Liberty tree flag in 1755. It shows a green pine tree on a white background with the words, an appeal to heaven. So this is number one. So they would then, they would then come over here and match that up and write a number one there. That's just a fun little flag activity. And then right after that, it gives them a chance to draw the version of the flag they find the most interesting or that they like. This is a really fun one. This is nom nom in the state of, so again, we were just using Texas as our example. And it says, are there any official foods for this state? Nuts, fish. So I would write the foods for the state of Texas. I can look that up in the um, Kids Atlas or online. Again, lots of different places you can find this information. We'll go over the resources in just a little bit. Is the state known for or growing and consuming or exporting a specific food? And then it gives them a chance to draw out their menu. So they could draw a little plate of food and then write what's on it. And then one of the activities on the divider encourages them to then try to cook that meal. And I did link a fun cookbook in the resource list. Let's move on. Oh, I already showed you guys the research paper. Oops, I added a page there. Sometimes when I'm using the page navigation, I will occasionally accidentally click add page, add page, add page. <laughs> and if you accidentally do that like me, it's easy to um, just delete it later. Okay, so those are all your acti activities pages. Let's take a look at the resource tab. Okay, there are two pages of resources that I've given you. Um, all of these are uh, quality resources, in my opinion, um, not too expensive or easily found at the library. I use this little grid to make myself notes and my child notes so they know where to find it. So for instance, this United States Atlas, National Geographic Kids United States Atlas, I um, reserved at our library. And so a lot of times I'll write, we have several libraries in our community. We're very fortunate in that way. And I wrote which library it's at. Um, and then once I have it checked out, I might, I might, you know, just write a check mark there and say when it's due back. So this is just a good place for you to have um, notes. I also left blank lines in the resource section so that you can include your own substitutions, keep track of your own book ideas. I found this state after I had already finished the, I found this book, pardon me, after I had already finished the resource list and I really like it. It's called How the States Got Their Names and it was available at our library and it's really cute. It goes into how that each, um, state got their name. And it's really fun to read the different history of that. So the, the different sections are uh, just general 50 states books, biographies, resources for indigenous peoples, national parks, a fun uh, poetry book, and then on page two of the resource list we have documentaries and videos. If it's underlined, that means I already included the hyperlink, so you could just click right on it. For instance, this Animaniacs song <laughs> is got a little ad here I won't bore you with, but it's a great way to get them memorizing the capitals. Jump me out of my planner. Um, so there's the documentaries and videos section. There is um, some enrichment in readers. 
So if you don't know about core knowledge, definitely look that up. I went ahead and pulled the books that I felt like would be most applicable to this particular 50 states study, but they are free textbooks and you could get them for levels, I believe it's K through eight or maybe K through six. I went ahead and just did K through six. Um, here are some books for younger kids that I've included and some games and a cookbook. So those are the resources I included. Again, I encourage you to just use whatever you find to be the most applicable for your kids. And they can get a lot of the information they need um, from a variety of sources. I've also included um, lots of additional maps for reference. So there are some detailed maps of each of the sections of the United States the regions. Let's see. There's a state capitals challenge. There's some memory work in here as well. Let's see. The US abbreviations. We've got the capitals. I also included the territories of the United States. I think it's important that we understand that there's the United States, and then we also have more information we could learn about the different territories we control. Federal Native American lands. I split it into two just so it was easier to see. These are the National Park System maps. You can see it's going to show not just the National Park itself, but also historic sites, recreation areas, anything that is considered to be part of the National Park System. Also included a national parks uh, list by state. If you want to check those off as you visit them. Okay, now we're to the memory work tab. I included the lyrics for the 50 Nifty United States and a link to that. Good way to get your kids memorizing the order of the states in alphabetical order. You may want them to memorize the Star Spangled Banner. Often we sing the very beginning of it, but there's actually a lot more to it. A lot of people don't know the state capitals, Waco America's 50 states and capitals. That is a famous YouTube. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. It was an Animaniacs cartoon, but it's a fun uh, way to memorize the capitals. And then there's some memory challenges. You could uh, challenge your kids to occasionally throughout your study, see if they improve on knowing the state capitals, being able to label the map. And then we get back to the activities, which I already went through. So that's the basis of your notebook. Again, if you need a page, for instance, you decide they want, you want them to do this, this selfie page, you would actually just click edit, select it, copy to, and then what I would do is I would actually copy it into the Texas um, section. So say, let's see, I would want it at the behind, page 218, so I'm gonna say on, on page 219, I wanna copy it to page 219. Now let's say copy, and then boom, that page is now in the state um, divider section for that state. So on these activities, once you've decided which ones you're gonna do, I'd recommend that you just either teach your kids how to copy it in there, or you copy it in there ahead of time for them so that, um, they they can do it themselves. So let's look at that page. We did a little selfie page. We added a picture, colored, wrote some funny quotes. Your kids can draw, but they can also just paste things in. For instance, on the activity page, if we were to do an animal profile, say they are not the type that wants to draw the picture of the armadillo. They would rather just copy it. They can just come over and find an image to include. And then they can finish their, their work. So, you know, your kids can draw, color, copy, paste, type, write. This is super flexible. I am going to also provide it as a print version as well for those of you who are choosing not to work digitally on iPads in a PDF annotating software. Um, you can certainly just do this the good old fashioned way on paper 
Um, but in our house, we really like to save paper and we like to leverage technology um, to be able to create a really dynamic notebook. So let me know if you have questions. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, so that as I continually release more resources, then you know what is coming into the shop. Thanks a lot for joining us, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.